So thanks you so much for joining us. The star me. market is off to a roaring start, no surprise given the limited supply and huge demand. But what do you make of the performance so far and the long-term risks here to investors? Roaring start it is, huh? <laughs> but I think it's a well expected, all right, given all the anticipations, the limited supply. I think, you know, the I'm not terribly surprised by the uh, first day performance, uh, but I think that's the beauty of uh, a new market. It's going to take uh, some time to settle down. You know, we obviously have another five days in terms of a free trading. You know, then we're into the uh, plus minus 20 percent regimes. So I think, uh, uh, and uh, we de definitely see more supply of the new distilled company in the pipeline. So I think, uh, you know, it's uh, the new market to have a little bit of enthusiasm is not bad, but longer term, I'm sure, you know, the investor will become a lot more rationalized. Right. I mean, this isn't the first time China has tried to create an alternate venue with looser regulations. We saw that huge boom and bust with the China next in 2015. What's different this time? I think the uh, major difference this time, or, 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 or from our perspective, the real significance is uh, the disclosure based, you know, IPO process. Right. This is actually a lot, lot of being said in the past, but this is the first time actually it gets done. So we are, China Renaissance actually represent one of the uh, uh, 25 companies listed today. So from our bankers' perspective, we, under, we understand the process is quite different from the past. The stock change has a very well-defined timeline in terms of going through a lot of questions. They ask a lot of questions, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's really up to your disclosure to decide whether you can still go ahead and get IP or not. What was that process for the company you represented from the application to listing? Was it less cumbersome? Well, it's, uh, it, it, I, you know, cumbersome is all relative, right? You know, there's a lot of work involved and you have to respond in a very uh, timely fashion. But what's different is it's a well-defined timetable and, and, and it's all about disclosures. In the end, it's not about whether you, you know, uh, 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 meet a certain, you know, uh, 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 requirements for these things. At the end of the day, it's about disclosures. So, so that's a process, you know, for us who actually represent a lot of Chinese tech companies listed overseas, we're quite familiar with. So for us, uh, actually, it, it is a uh, an, 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 an quite interesting, you know, change of the uh, concept. And there's been some concern about the quality of names that have listed for a country that has the most unicorns after the United States. There are no high profile household names. So what's your view on that? So the couple of things to clarify. One, I think for the stock market, the focus is a lot more on the technology innovation itself. Uh, a lot of Chinese unicorns are still largely based on the you know, consumer Internet. A lot of innovation is happening in the uh, uh, is, is taking a form in the business model innovation, not necessarily technology innovation. So the focus is different. Secondly, you know, I mean, from the launch of the concept to uh, implementation, it's barely six months. So I think in terms of the first batch of company, a lot of them actually are there, uh, not necessarily because they are the absolute, you know, best in technology companies in China, but uh, oftentimes because, you know, they are the ones actually ready for, for IPO. But having said that, you know, we, uh, we, we, we actually gone through, you know, a lot of the companies. I'm actually sitting on the advisory committee for the stock change as well. I, think, I would say the first batch of companies overall quality is, is pretty good. And how much do you see the shifting the balance of listing from New York and Hong Kong to mainland China? I mean, the U.S. is still a very attractive place given the opportunity to raise U.S. dollars amid capital control rules. I think um, these are different markets, U.S., Hong Kong and China, including the stock markets, will all have a different focus. Uh, U.S., I think if you're a large cap companies in U.S., you have a perfect comp. You know, this is the best place to go because the most liquid, you know, uh, uh, broadest, you know, uh, 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 capital markets in the world. Uh, Hong Kong, you know, obviously uh, have through the connect to have a liquidity to the China market. And if you're a uh, consumer internet companies with a unique business model, Hong Kong is probably your, your top pick. And if you're Hard, what we call a hard tech company, right? Technology driven, you know, technology, you know, based the company, you know, semiconductor companies, hardware companies, China is probably the best choice. So I think, you know, from our perspective, you know, the world investor as well, you know, it's always good to have more options. I think eventually the Chinese tech companies, entrepreneurs also will find that, you know, uh, 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 the group, they will group towards, you know, different selections. How much interest are you seeing from international institutional investors, many of which may be your clients? We actually got asked a lot of questions. Uh, uh, and they are very curious about the market development. They're also exploring a way of uh, participating in this market. I think it, 
Um, what is missing now is the ability to participate in the IPO itself. Because uh, if you're uh, a qualified foreign investor, you can always buy in a secondary market. But obviously, given the enthusiasm, maybe uh, 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 um, uh, these inv institute investors were trying to find a way uh, to uh, become IPO investor instead. So uh, there's a lot of discussion been going on. You know, we're also been the facility quite a bit of discussion with the uh, regulatory authorities, with the stock change. And I think a, a longer term, it will be good to have the representation of international, you know, uh, institutional investors. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, I think for this new market, having a, a group of anchor core investors focused on long-term fundamental will be good for the long-term uh, uh, health, health for the market. At this point in time, what's your advice to those international institutional investors? And where are you seeing the most demand? In what geographic area? I think across board, you know, I mean, uh, people from uh, lonely communities and hedge funds and sovereigns, they are looking at this market with a lot of, you know, curiosities and potentially enthusiasm. My advice in general is one, obviously, you know, stay very close you know, in any new market, you know, you have to be involved, you have to pay attention. Secondly, you know, do work guys like us, you know, to have meaningful dialogue with the regulators, you know, figure out a way to, for them to have a more meaningful representation. Xi Jinping announced this stock exchange less than a year ago. It's been touted by the top levels of the government and it's taken sort of added significance amid the trade war. So how important do you see this exchange being in terms of incubating and growing China's domestic innovations? I think it uh, uh, will, will become a very uh, uh, good choice for Chinese tech, technology companies to uh, seek you know, uh, additional fundings. Because obviously uh, this this board is mer very much focused on indigenous you know technology innovations, and and encourage you know Chinese companies with proprietary technology to be listed here, and I think you know longer term this is the area China needs to develop right. Largely, uh, uh, we have not been as good when it comes to fundamental research, and and, and fundamental research you know led innovations, and this is a uh, hopefully a. Uh, a very significant step in that direction. And for the company that you represented that went public, what was that process like? Did they apply or were they approached by regulators to apply? No, they, they apply, they apply. Obviously, you know, I mean, after initial vetting process, you know, uh, um, our companies or the two companies we invested are all medical technology companies are uh, uh, um, with very advanced technology and really competing with the, uh, the best company in the world, the world-class companies. So. Obviously, they're uh, encouraged by the uh, stock change to, uh, to, uh, to move ahead. And how concerned are you about a period of ultra-high demand here, draining market liquidity? Well, I think, you know, enthusiasm, your know, coming phase, right? You know, uh, uh, we just kind of have to trust the market you know, over the longer term and will uh, find, find its uh, equilibrium. Yeah. And you're very in tune with the venture capital industry in China. There's been a cooling off period. Does this exchange provide some optimism for investors that there is another exit opportunity for their companies here? Hopefully not too optimistic. You know, from <laughs> our perspective, you know, we are counting on a, a good supply, good measure of supply demand. You know, uh, and I think uh, it's good to be enthusiastic, but uh, you know, uh, I think at the same time you have to stay cool as well. So.